In the previous video, we defined the three types of bit shift operations needed in digital design. We then saw a basic circuit that can do just one fixed type of shifting. In this video, we will analyze logic circuits that are multifunctional shifters. I do have slides that summarize this lesson, but I believe it's easier to demonstrate in the simulator, so that is where we'll spend the remainder of this video. This first circuit can perform two different functions, shift left by one bit or right by one bit. To determine the mode, a select switch is needed. Based on this notation, it is clear that a zero will cause a shift to the left and one to the right. Let's see it in action. First, I'll input binary 0011. With the current left shift, that output becomes 0110 with a shift out signal of zero. Now I'll switch it to a right shift. The output is now 0001 with a shift out signal of one. The outputs appear to be correct. So how does it work? Let's consider one input bit A1. A1 could become output Q2 if shifting left or Q0 if shifting right. These two AND gates determine where A1 is routed. One of them will be forced output 0, and one of them will match the A1 value. As is, with the mode set to right, A1 travels down this green wire and into this AND gate. That AND gate now is two inputs of one, so its output is one. And that signal is passed through this OR gate. Thus, Q0 takes on the value of A1, as it should when shifting right. Coming down this blue wire is a signal of zero. That enters this AND gate, which means the output is forced to be zero, regardless of A1. So, overall, the A1 signal gets blocked in one direction and is allowed to pass in the other. This pattern is repeated for the other input bits. The unique output is this shift out. This is the bucket that collects the bit that falls away. Either the leftmost bit in shift left mode, or the rightmost bit in shift right mode. Those words I just said are reflected in the schematic. In shift right mode, the rightmost bit, A0, feeds into the bucket because this AND gate is activated. Meanwhile, A3 is cut off by this AND gate up top. Conversely, in shift left mode, A3 feeds into the bucket because this AND gate is activated. The circuit isn't too complicated once we study it closely, but the layout becomes even easier when we take advantage of multiplexers, as we'll see next. Before we move there, I have a question for you. Does this circuit do logical or arithmetic shifts, and why? This circuit has an identical function to the previous one. In fact, I'm showing the same example numbers so you can compare apples to apples. Again, 0011 shifted right yields 0001 with a shift out bit of 1. But I think this schematic is a little easier to read as long as we understand how the muxes operate. These 2 to 1 muxes will select the one data input to pass through. If the select signal is 1, then A is chosen, which aligns with the shift right mode. If the select signal is 0, then B is chosen, which aligns with the shift left mode. Notice how this naming convention makes it easy to plug in the MUX to our current purpose. For example, where does this Q2 value come from? There are two options. As is, with the select signal high, this A port is chosen, which traces back to input A3. In other words, when shifting right, A3 becomes Q2. Conversely, when the select signal is low, this B port is chosen, which traces back to input A1. Thus, when shifting left, A1 becomes Q2. This matches the goal of the circuit. 
back to the question I asked you. Does this circuit do logical or arithmetic shifts? The answer is logical. The bit value being backfilled is a zero, whether shifting to the right, into Q3, or shifting to the left, into Q1. This can be a useful circuit in its own right, but it also lays the foundation for other shift operations we may want to do. Possible extensions are to allow for arithmetic right shifts, to include a no change mode, and to allow for shifting by more than one bit position. Let's first add in a no change or a shift zero capability. I'll show the full circuit now for a numeric example and then zoom in to look at details. The input code is 1011. The select bits are set to 00, zero which thanks to my nicely annotated circuit, I know is shift left mode. The output is thus 0110 with a shift out of 1. Next, I'll quickly change the mode to no change. The output is now 1011 with a shift out of 0. Lastly, I'll change the mode to shift right. The output reads 0101 with a shift out of 1. So it appears to be working correctly. Now I'll zoom in to better examine the layout. After the previous circuit, the approach here should not be a surprise. Again, muxes are used to select which data reaches the outputs. With three modes, the 2 to 1 mux is not sufficient. A 3 to 1 mux would have been fine, but I didn't have that device available, so I used a 4 to 1 mux. This means there is one unused or undefined option. To handle that, I connected ground to port D3 on each of the muxes. Select input code 11 should simply never be used. But the other ports are useful. Let's see how input A3 connects. A3 should pass straight through to Q3 in no change mode. Therefore, A3 connects to port D1 in front of Q3. Why port D1? Because that will be the chosen signal in no change mode based on this definition. A3 becomes Q2 when shifting right, which is mode 2. Therefore, in front of Q2, A3 connects to port D2. Finally, a3 becomes the shift out bit when shifting left, which is mode 0. Therefore, in front of shift out, A3 connects to port D0. Naturally, this pattern continues for the other bits in the schematic. Note that the select codes are arbitrary. I chose them in this order simply because it made for fewer wire crossings in the diagram. This schematic still can only perform a logical right shift, thanks to this ground signal providing the backfill bits. But this can be easily adapted to include the capability for an arithmetic right shift. We even have unused ports in the muxes, just waiting for something to do. I won't show the internal circuit, but will probably ask you to design that yourself. I will show the completed device symbol, however. Notice how I use a hex keyboard and display for the 4-bit code. This makes for quick changes, but isn't always the most convenient for watching the bit shift, so I also am showing the binary values. I also use a hex keyboard for the mode select, with only the two LSBs connected. Let's demonstrate with an input of hex 4 or binary 0100. In no change mode, that 4 remains a 4. In shift left mode, that lone 1 moves up 1 position. Also noteworthy is that 4 times 2 is 8. It is neat to see this multiply by 2 operation so cleanly. In shift right mode, the lone 1 moves down 1 position. And sure enough, we see that shift right also functions as a divide by 2 operation. In this case, it does not matter if I select a logical or arithmetic shift right. Because of this leading zero, the backfill bit is guaranteed to be a zero. However, the difference appears when there is a leading one. 
I'll choose an input of hex C or binary 1100. The logical right shift yields 0110. The arithmetic right shift yields 1110. The leading one persists with an arithmetic shift. That will wrap up this lesson. We could build on these ideas to shift by more than one position at a time, and also to handle sequences of more than four bits. We did see a number of circuits, but they all followed the same general pattern. The most important part of understanding the circuits is to know the definitions of the three types of shifts. Practice these on paper with lots of numerical examples.